started this lesson on last week, and it's so important that as we move forward in our lives and what God wants to do in our life and what God wants to do in the ministry and what God wants to do in the earth, it's important that we learn how to trust God, how to put our trust in God. So we began that, this lesson on last week. If you turn in your Bibles to 1 Kings, 1 Kings uh, 17 chapter, and on last week we, we read the first uh, uh, seven verses. We'll start with verse 8 on today. We'll start with verse 8 and we'll read down to verse 16 as we talk about Elijah as our example of God sending him through, taking him through a process of trusting God. See, trusting God is a process, and we want to really understand that. So let's go to 1 Kings 17, 8 through 16, and let me pray first, and then we'll read the scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now for this opportunity uh, to just share your word. It's an honor to just stand here, God, and to, to read of you and your word and to be able to share uh, this study with your people. So I pray, God, that you give us an understanding. We live in a time, and we live in a time, God, that we must learn to trust you, God. And you take us, as you take us through the process, there are so many challenges in our lives, and we have to learn to trust you each and every day, God, for our survival, for our protection, God, for our resources, for everything. We live, we move, we have our being in you. Without you, we're nothing. But with you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So, Father, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Very familiar passage of scriptures in 1 Kings 17. Uh, I will start with the, the eighth verse. We're talking about the widow at Zarephath. And it says here, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of, of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So, so he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gate of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bit of bread too, a bite of bread too. But he said, I swear by, she said, I swear by the Lord your God, I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I only have a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, there will always be flour and olive oil left in the containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops will grow again. As we talk about Elijah, to give you some background of Elijah, he was, he was a prophet of God who, who prophesied during the reign of King Ahab. And if you study history, King Ahab was, was the husband of Jezebel. You hear that term from time to time. He was the husband of of Jezebel. So King, so, so here Elijah was a prophet that was called to, to challenge the ways of, of, of Ahab. So we want to look at his example, what it means to trust God, how the process that God took him through to trust God. On last week, if you heard the lesson on last week in the first uh, seven verses, God sent uh, Elijah to, to Kareth, which was, a, was, which was a, a, a location by the Jordan River. And he instructed Elijah, he said, I'm going to feed you with ravens. I'm going to feed you bread in the evening and bread, bread in the morning, bread in the evening through a raven, a bird, and, I, and you can drink from the brook by the river. Keep in mind now, if you, if you study the history of Elijah, this was after Elijah, God had told Elijah to prophesy to Ahab that it would not rain for three and a half years. And he prayed, and there was no rain for three and a half years. But during this three and a half years, there became a famine in the land. And because of that famine, that's why people was experiencing a lack of food. So here we see it picks up at verse 8 that this widow woman was about to cook her last meal for her and her son because there was no more food in the land because they had a major drought. So God has sent Elijah to, to the brook of Kareth. 
And God had fed him by, with the raven, bread, day and night. But when the brook dried up, God sent Elijah out now. As he came through that process of trusting, learning to trust in God, God sent him out now to encourage others. So he came in contact, as he was led by the Lord, with this widow woman. With this widow woman. Elijah, as I told you last week, Elijah's name means Jehovah is God. And Jehovah, as we talked, and you want to you come on Thursday night, we're talking, about, we're talking about the names of God, and we're breaking each one of them down. But Jehovah also means the self-existing one, the, the, the unchangeable God, the God who does not change. So when God gave you a name, it meant something. So Elijah's name was Jehovah is God, because God wanted to reveal himself as Jehovah, Jehovah. And Jehovah means also that God is, is unchangeable. The Bible tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In the book of Hebrews 13 and 5, I think it is. In the book of Malachi 3 and 6, the Bible tells us that we have a God that changes not. Look at somebody and say, God does not change. God does not change. We, change. we change. People change. But God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and also forevermore. So as we look at this story here, I want to go to the next screen. We want to go from last week. I gave you a definition of trust, what it means to trust. So let's go back to that definition that we gave last week on trusting God. This is a definition here that, 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 that reveals God to us. Look what it says here. Define trust. A firm belief in the reliability, the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone. In other words, a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, and the strength of someone. Synonyms of trust is confidence. Look, somebody said we got to have confidence in God. We can't, we, we can't waver in our faith. God is teaching us we can't waver in our faith. One, one, one minute we're trusting God, and then the next minute we're doubting God. You know, we're up and down. One minute, one minute we, we're walking in faith, and the other minute we're walking in doubt. Sometimes we have to, me and my wife, we have to check each other. We, we're talking faith for a minute, and when one, one of us slip, we got to always check each other. Okay, we got to talk faith here. We got to talk faith here. We got we to talk, talk the word of God. So, so here, trust, a synonym means confident, belief, faith, freedom from suspicion or doubt. Freedom from suspicion or doubt. In other words, it's the opposite of doubt. Certainty, assurance, conviction, credence, and reliance. And as we looked at this definition last week, we said that we can trust God because this definition, God, 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 God is everything God is, we can see it in this definition. First of all, God is reliable. Look, somebody say he's reliable. As we said last week in 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, the Bible said that God is faithful. Faithful means that he is reliable. God is faithful. God will never let us down. God will never leave us hanging. God will always be there for us, even when it feels like he's not. God is always there. But look at somebody and say, it's not about a feeling that we have. It's about a knowing. See, what we miss is sometimes where, where we, 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 base, we base this trust and our confidence on God based on how we feel. Today, I feel like I can trust God. But tomorrow you may feel like you can't. But it's not about how you feel. It's about what you know. Knowing that you can trust God. When you came in here today, every one of you right now is sitting in a seat, in a chair. You came in here and you just automatically just dropped down in your chair. Why? Because you had confidence and you had trust that that chair that you're sitting in was going to hold you up. Because you had trust that it would. Amen. But I've been in some places where I've seen some chairs let down some folks. I, I mean, I've just seen it, seen it happen recently. The, the screws or whatever underneath the chair got loose somehow, and somebody sat out in the chair and it went straight down to the floor. But in God, we can always put our trust in God. I can't always put my confidence in this chair. Because, see, these, these chairs have some bolts and screws in it. And if we don't tighten them up, McGill, from time to time, they're going to let somebody down one day. It may be two years, it may be three years, but we have to check these chairs because these the screws were coming loose. But the point is, I'm trying to make, when you came in here, you had a trust 
that that chair was going to hold you up, didn't it? Well, we got to have a, tr a greater trust in God because we know that God is reliable. We know that God is faithful. He's faithful, and we got to trust in a faithful God, even though we may not, like I said last week, we may not see it in the natural, but we got to know in the spirit that God is going to take care of us. Whatever I'm going through, whatever the issue is, God is here with me. The Bible said he's Jehovah. He would never change. He would never leave me. He would never save me. For he is what? God. He's God. We know that God is the truth. The definition say God is truth. We know, we know truth. The Bible said that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We got to know that God is the truth without a shadow of a doubt. We got to know that God has the ability. Ephesians 3 and 20, this is just from last week, guys. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, now unto him who is able, who, is, who, who can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God is able so we can have our trusting him. And also we know that God is strong. We know that he's a strong. David looked at him this way and said, the Lord is a strong. He's strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and battle in Psalms 24 and 8. But as we move on from this week and the short period of time that I have, let's go to Psalms 37 and 3. We, we, we can't talk about trust until we, we, until we cover these two scriptures. But these are two scriptures that we cover quite a bit. David learned to trust God through his journey. And in Psalms here, 37 and 3, David said it this way. Trust in the Lord. Look, somebody say, trust in the Lord. And do good. And he said this. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shall be fed. In other words, David would say, if you learn to trust in God, my God will take care of you. If we learn to trust in him. So David learned to trust God. Solomon learned to trust God. Look the way he put it in Proverbs 3, 5, and 8. Another very familiar passage of scripture here. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 8, the Bible says this. It says what? To trust in the Lord. Y'all know this scripture. What? With all thine heart. And lean not unto thy own what? Understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And what he said he would do? And he would direct our path. But God just want us what? To trust him. David had to learn to trust God. Solomon had to learn to trust God. So we today, we must learn how to trust God. But there's a process of learning how to trust God. God takes us through situations in life that we're put in. You don't know you can trust somebody until you need them. Somebody got that. I, I heard that out there somewhere. I don't know who that was. But somebody, somebody received that. But you, you really don't know if you can trust someone until you really need them. There, there was a saying, what? you don't know who your friends are sometime until, until you really need them. But you don't know who you can trust. Sometimes people say, well, 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 well I, I'm there for you. If you need anything, let me know. How, you know, I'm, I'm there for you, my brother, sister. And then when you have a need and you call them, you can't get them. Because we got, what do we got? We got all of this, this, uh, uh, our, our iPhone. We got this caller ID. And, 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 they, and you don't tell, you don't, now they done told you if you need me, call my, I mean, if you need anything, I got you, brother. I, I got you, bro. But they, but they know you in need now to see your name come up on the phone. They don't even, they don't even answer your text. They don't even, they don't even answer your call. So you don't know if you can trust someone until you really need them. But thank God we serve a God. Hallelujah. Thank God we serve a God that's not like man. Like I said last week, I may let you down. I, I hope I don't, but I may can let you down because I'm human. You may can let me down, but we serve a God that would never let us down. Now, the issue is he may not respond like you want him to, and he may not respond when you want him to, but God already has a plan for your situation because God, God already knew you would have a situation before you had it. He already has a plan in place before it even arrived. God already had a plan in place because he knew. But we can trust in the God that way. And we can trust in our God that way. We have to learn. And sometimes God had to take Elijah through a process of being, being on the brook, a place where he could not provide for himself. There was no food. So God had to send a bird to feed him. Boy, what a way to build trust. Isn't that a way to build, an awesome way to build trust? 
Well, you're in a corner where only God. See, you learn the process of trusting God is when you're in a situation where no one can help you but God. And that's what God takes us through life sometimes. This journey, this, this journey of life, God will take us through some situations that we can only learn through that process that we're going to trust God. But there's no other way that we're going to survive. Amen? So trusting God. So, so, so trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not into their own understanding. In all their ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. Quickly, I want to give you three reasons to trust God. Three reasons to trust God. Number one, if you're writing this down. Number one, this is one of the many, many reasons to trust God, but I'm just going to give you three that we'll talk about today. God is sovereign. Does somebody say God is sovereign? What does that mean, Pastor? It means that he has the power, the wisdom, and the authority to do anything he chooses within his creation. It means that God has the power to do whatever he wants to do because he's God. As we learned on, on, on Thursday night, we was talking about uh, uh, the name of God and, and, and Elohim, and, and we was talking about how great God, the, the, he's God, the creator. God is, 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 God created time and he created space. So that means he's, he's outside of time and he's outside of space, but yet he occupies time and he occupies space. But he's outside of it because he created it. God, he's sovereign. He's sovereign. Nothing can happen unless God allows it to happen because he's sovereign. And God does not have to report to anyone. On earth, we always have somebody we have to report to. But God doesn't have anyone to report to because he's God. He's a self-existent one. So he's sovereign. So we can trust in a sovereign God who has all power in his hand. Believe it or not, God created the heavens and the earth and he's spoken into existence. So God is powerful. We'll talk about that. So we can trust him. Think about this. We can trust in the God who created everything that we see. What a trust. What a trust. One of the things about being sovereign is I want to talk about these three, these three characteristics of God, but there's still the first one. I want to talk about the characteristics of God here because this speaks of his sovereignty. Number one, God is omniscient. Number two, God is omnipotent. And number three, God is omnipresent. We can trust him. Let's talk about what it means to be omniscient. Omniscient is, being, is having total knowledge. God knows. Look at somebody say, God knows everything. God even knows stuff about you that you don't even know about yourself because he created us. God knows everything. He's, he's omniscient. Sometimes we act like God doesn't know. When we go pray, sometimes we act like God doesn't know our situation. Well, God, I'm coming to you, God, Father, in the name of Jesus, because I know that you don't know what I'm going through, God. I know that you don't understand my day, God, and, and the things that happened to me this day. God already knows. Exactly. He knew it before it even happened. God knows. So we can trust in God because he knows everything. The book of Matthew says it this way. God even knows. He knows what we have need of even before we ask him. God already knows. When we kneel down to pray to God, God already knows what we have need of. Isn't that powerful? can trust God because, because he's, he's, he's omniscient. He's, he's all-knowing. He knows everything. It's nothing. He knows my situation. He knows everything about my situation. He already knows how he, his plan that he has in place to address my situation. God already knows the, the end. He knows what's going to happen. He knows that from the beginning to the end, God knows. He knows. But he just wants us to trust him. He knows everything. He wants us to talk to him because he knows everything. Where's the best place to go get wisdom? God. Why? Because God knows everything. And he has the answer for all of our situations. Look, somebody said we can trust him. I want to go to 1 John 3 and 20. And it says this, for if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth what? All things. We don't have to turn there, but in the book of Matthew, Jesus said it this way, for he even knows the very hairs on your head. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot for me because I don't have any on my head. But some of you have a lot of hair on your head. God knows every hair that's upon your head. That is awesome. But he knows. 
In other words, Jesus was saying God knows everything. See, there's nothing we can hide from God. I can hide stuff from you. I can come to church and I can, I can look like everything is okay. I mean, I can put on my clothes. I can bring in my Bible and I can say hallelujah. I can say praise God. I can say God is good, isn't he? And you can say yes, he is. All the time God is good. But God knows everything that's going on in my life. You may not know, but God knows. And that's why I can trust him. Because he knows. God is omnipotent which means he's all-powerful. Psalms 33 and 6 says this, But the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. In other words, God is all-powerful. We talked about it last week. God, God, God has, he created, he spoke the earth into existence. What the Bible says, for, for the word of the Lord, he spoke the earth into existence by his what? Word. I'm reminded of the book of Matthew, the eighth chapter, where, where, where the Roman soldier came, and, and you know the story. He asked, he asked Jesus to heal his servant. And he says, uh, uh, Jesus, I am a man of authority. So he was saying, I understand how authority works. Power comes with authority. He said, by me being a Roman uh, uh, centurion, a leader soldier, he said, I understand how authority works. I can say to, a, to one of my soldiers, go here and go there, and they will go. Because they, they understand my authority. But, but what, what he was saying was, God, you, Jesus Christ, you are a person of authority. You speak the word only because you have so much power. You speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. We know the story in, the, in, in Matthew chapter 8. And guess what? His servant was healed. Because he said, speak it. That's power. You know, God can give you one word that can change your whole life. Amen. One word can change your whole life. But look at somebody and say, we got to trust him. We got to trust him. We got we to gotta trust that, that, that God is all powerful, that God is all knowing. We got to trust that he's sovereign. He's in control. See, God is in control of everything. Our president is not in control. Uh, the country is not in control. Man is not in control. God is in control of everything. See, the devil will make us uh, uh, look at a situation as if someone else is in control or something is in control. But what God is teaching us to trust him, that he is always in control. See, if we develop this thinking, we're going to come through some things. Amen. And we're, we're going to walk in peace. We're going we're gonna to walk with joy. We're going we're gonna to be able to walk with, and, and with the joy of the Lord because we understand that God is in control. I tell me and my wife, we check each other. No, God is in control. We don't care how I look, McGill. God is in control. Now, I'm reminded of the scripture that I always quote that we, we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. In other words, we have to trust him. It's not based on what it looks like in the natural because God always worked in the supernatural. Amen. You know, the story of Gideon, he took Gideon and reduced his army, you know, uh, down to, what, 300 men, whatever. He reduced the army because God wanted them to trust him. So sometimes it looked like we can't win or we're not winning. But God is saying, just trust me. One thing I know about God in my 30 plus years of walking with God, I, I know that God has always came through for me. Amen. Now, it may not have been the results that I desired, but look at somebody say, God knows what's best for us. Look at somebody say, can you trust him? God is omnipresent. Look at somebody say, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. I want to go to the second reason. I'm going to skip down to the second reason why we must trust God. Another reason to trust God. Number two, God fulfills his promises. Look at somebody and say, God fulfills his promises. I want to go to Romans, the book, the fourth chapter, verse 8 and 21. And it says this, very familiar scripture, Abraham learned also how to trust God. See, everybody we read in the Bible that was, that was a servant of God had to learn how to trust God. And God always takes them through a process. And it says this, Abraham, the Bible says this, Romans says this about Abraham. It says, who against hope believe in hope? Because he was 100 years old when Isaac was conceived. Remember that. Who against hope believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall their seed be. 
And be not weak in what? Faith. He was not weak in faith, but consider his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of serving woman. Listen to what he says here. He staggered not at what? The promises of God. Through what? Unbelief. Abraham learned to trust God. The Bible uh, declares him as what? The father of faith. And it says here, and he staggered not the promises of God. Through unbelief. He was strong in his what? Faith. Look at somebody and say, stop wavering. Stop wavering. Y'all know what wavering is? Well, I know what the word says. Uh, you know, we, we know the word. Y'all, y'all know the word. I know what the word says. But, 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 but I, I don't know, baby. I don't, I don't know if God going to come through for us. I don't know if God going to But you know what the word says. Wavering is when we go back and forth, we begin to doubt God. We begin to doubt God. See, when we leave here on Sunday morning, we built up in the word. And we, we, we're able to face the mountains. We, we're able to face anything. But by Thursday... Once the devil starts feeding these negative seeds in our mind, by Thursday, we begin to waver about, will God do this? Can God do this? I, mean, I told some, some uh, we had a discussion with, 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 uh, with our executive team here, and we said, you know, uh, we've, been, we've been believing God for, for renting a, a, a bigger facility. But we started thinking about that thing. We need to believe God for something greater. Amen. We don't just need to believe God for renting a bigger facility. We need to start believing God for some land. Amen. We need to start believing God for, 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 for a building on that land. We, we need to learn how to trust God for something of our own. Amen. Do we have all the money in the bank account? No, we don't. But look, someone say, we got to trust God. Don't we? Yeah. How, how are you going to do it? I don't know, but he's going to do it. Y'all look around and say, well, we're, y'all started counting. One, two, three, four, five. How are we going to do this, Pastor? One, two, three, four, five. I don't know. I mean, I can count too. I'm counting the same number you count. I don't know, Kathy, but he can do it. Amen. I've known churches where people gave the church land. Amen. I've known some situations where they didn't have to pay for acres of land. I know a situation where a church bought a land for like a several, several hundred thousand dollars and ended up making a million because somebody wanted the land back and paid them triple what they paid for. You can't tell me God is not good Amen. if we just trust him. God can do it for others. He can do it for us. I remember preaching a sermon some years ago at Pastor Harold Church and I said, why not you? If God can do it for others, he can do the same thing for you. But we all have to learn how to do what? Trust some Abraham learn how to trust God. Number three, we, the reason we trust God, God cares for us. First Peter 5 and 7 say, cast all of your what? Cares upon the Lord. For he cares for you. Now I want to go back to the book of, of Kings here. And I want to go back to Elijah in, in, in closing and look at the example that Elijah gave. God had built Elijah's trust for him to move on to Zarephath. And it says, the Lord said to Elijah, go and live. Let's go back to the scripture. Live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Simon. I have instructed a widow there what? to feed you. Think about this now. How his faith has been, his trust has been built up. If God can feed me with a bird, sure enough, he can use a woman. Amen. That can get in the kitchen, or a man, whatever, right? can get in the kitchen and can, and, can, and can make up some bread, which y'all don't do no more. Nobody's making no bread like they used to. Amen. I know y'all ain't, ain't cooking no homemade bread and stuff no more like y'all used to. But God can use you to make some homemade biscuits, McGill. And cornbread to feed me. So, so Elijah's faith and his trust in God now was built up. How can you doubt God now? It's still, now, keep in mind, he prayed for famine for three and a half years, right? Keep in mind, there's still lack of food. There's still famine. But Elijah, like, if he can feed me by bird, sure enough, he can feed me through another person. Amen. So his trust now in God was even greater because he knew God can come through for him. Man, you send a bird, gonna, if a bird fly down here and bring me some steaks and some potatoes? <laughs> Hallelujah. I have, why am I doubt God now? 
Why are we doubting God now? What has God done for you in your past? What has God brought you through? How has God delivered you in your past? If he's done it then to build your trust and your faith, look at somebody and say, he can do it now. Come on, somebody give him praise. Give him praise. Whatever you need, God can do it. All along, he's been taking you through this trial, through that trial, to do what? To build your faith. Let's go back here. Look what it says here. So, Elijah, verse 10, so he went. In other words, he obeyed God. So he went as he arrived at the gate of the village. He saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? And as she was going to get it, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread. Why? Two. Keep in mind, it was a famine. But look how, how, how God used this, this widow woman to build her trust. Because she responded like we respond most, most of the time in situations like this, when we're in need. There's a famine. She doesn't know where her next meal is coming from. She just had a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. And look what she said in verse 12. She says, but she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in this house. So she was telling Elijah, I, I, I don't have any bread. First of all, she began to focus on her natural circumstances. But God was going to take her focus out of the natural and bring it into the spiritual. But she was real. Look at somebody say she was real. Look at somebody say, if you don't have it, you don't have it. But you believe God for it. Amen. Amen. You believe God for it. Just because in the natural you don't have it, but I always say in the spiritual is there. I just got to get what God has promised in the spiritual down in the natural. And that's going to come with having faith and trusting in God. So this widow woman had to learn to trust God. Look what she said here. But she said, I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I only, and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil. She says, in the bottom of the jug, listen to what she said. Here she had, she had already accepted, accepted uh, defeat. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. And then my son and I what? will die. What an opportunity for God. To build her faith. Here's a woman with just, she just had a little oil and she had a little bread. She said, I'm going to make my last meal. She was telling the man of God, I, I, I don't have any bread for you. I don't have any bread for you. But Elijah was, was, was trying to get her to just trust God. And God will provide for you. But here's a, here's a widow woman that said, I, I, I don't have it. I only have a little bit that me and my, my son, we're going to eat what I have, and then we're going to die. How many times have we accepted defeat in our lives? How many times have we just threw in the towel and just gave up on God? And God is still encouraging us, don't, don't give up on me. Look somebody say, never give up on God. And look what Elijah tells her. Now, this woman, was, she was just keeping it real. I don't have it, man of God. But I'm just going to fix for me and my child, so we're going to die because we have no other food. We have no other resource. We have nothing left for us but to die. And look what Elijah said to her. He says, but Elijah said to her, first of all, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. Trust in God. Elijah was teaching her, trusting God means that we must also what? Put God what? First. Look at somebody say, God must be first. See, over this Christian walk of mine, I had to learn to trust God because I didn't always have this trust in God. And I still ask in God, God, I need to trust you even more. I need to have more faith than what I have today. But through this journey, well, I had to learn to trust God because God will put you in situations like the process of Elijah to build your faith. You'll see how much do you really trust me. Here's, here's the root of one. And pretty much God has said, how much do you trust me? And Elijah gave instruction. Just, in other words, put God 
first. And when you put God first, look at somebody and say, when you put God first, God will deliver. Look what he said to her. Look what he said to her. And I had to learn that that didn't come overnight for me. Trusting God and putting God first did not come overnight. It was a process I had to go through. God had to take me through a step by step by step to learn to trust him and to put him first in everything that I do. So if you just trust me, if you just trust me, just put me first. Just trust me. God is saying, just trust me. Just, 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 just wake up in the morning and, and, and speak to me first. Just trust me. Just, just wake up in the morning, and when you get up out your bed, even if you don't have a lot of time, roll up out your bed and say, God, I'm going to give you the first of my time. Before you even hit the flow, it could be five minutes, it could be ten minutes, just acknowledge God in your life this day. Because think about it. God gave us the air to breathe. It was God who woke us up. It was God who we depend on that's going to have to protect us throughout the rest of the day. It is God who we trust that's going to have to bring us home safe. We have to wake up every morning. Every morning you get up, the first thing you do when you get up is roll over out your bed and say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you today. And have that conversation with God. Every, look at somebody say every morning. We get up our bed and we roll over and we don't ask God and we don't bring God into our life. What we're really saying with our actions is I trust myself, God, more than I trust you. I do encourage you to spend an hour in prayer a day. But at that time, you don't have to spend an hour. Just acknowledge God in your life every morning you wake up. God, this day is a day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice, God, and be glad in it. And ask God to, to protect you throughout the whole day. Ask God to direct you. They say, God, I will trust you with, with all my heart. I'm going to lean not into my own understanding, but in all my ways. This day, I'm going to acknowledge you, God, and you're going to direct my path. This day. The first thing we should do when we get up is speak to God. And the last thing we need to do when we go to bed is speak to God. Look at my say, He must be trusted. He must be trusted. That's what it means to what? To trust God. Look at I'm going to trust Him. Come on, God. Give God some praise. I gotta, I'm coming to a close here. But God is always true. When God tells us something in His I'm going to say God will deliver. He just wants us to trust in this word. Listen, listen to this in, the, in closing here. He said, that was my first close, right? Or was that my second? <laughs> y'all always give the preacher three closes. Y'all remember that, right? Give us, give us three closes. But then it says, look at this. Elijah said to her, he says, for this is what the Lord God of Israel says. How God speaks to us today in his word. In his word. This is what it says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord send rain, sends rain and the crops will grow again. So she did as Elijah, this is awesome here, she did as Elijah said. In other words, she put God first. She did what Elijah said. And look what it says. Oh, I love this. And her family continued to eat for many what? Days. It didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. There was always enough what? Flour and olive oil what? Left in the container just as the Lord promised to Elijah. And in my fourth clothing, the word of God is God promises we obey his word and we trust him, God would always come through. I don't know what you are going through. I'm coming to a close, God. You can play your music. I don't know what you're going through. Amen. But God will always come through to you. Amen. 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 As we close out, I had to ask the guys to get my music going. That's, that's always a pastor's sound. I've been in church where pastors speak, and I see the musicians like, okay, it's time, it's time to shut this down. They're still playing the music. <laughs> Y'all seen that before. Y'all know that. They've they been trying to get the pastor a sign. Okay, pastor, it's time to close it down. <laughs> so I, I had to go ahead and tell them to get the music, so I'm really closing. <laughs> so 
But this whole mess is about trusting God. does that because he wants you to trust in him and no one else but him first God puts us in a situation where we've got to learn he has the answer sometimes you can seek the answer sometimes God will use people to give you an answer but in a lot of cases God wants to give you the answer directly but he wants you to come into his presence so he'll put you on that island all by yourself it seems like so that you can learn to trust in him whenever you're in a situation God always done this whenever sometimes whenever uh, he, would, he would use his people in the Bible. He would, he would put them in a predicament where they couldn't do anything but trust in God. Zechariah says, not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. In other words, God will come through for you if you just learn to trust him. And you demonstrate that you trust God by putting him what? first. I learned to trust God in my finances because I put him what? First. I learned to trust God for my family because I put God first. And he always took care of my family. And he'll always take care of your finances. He will always take care of you because God promises would never fail. Let's pray. Let's lift our hands and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we leave here today, we know as we walk through those doors, God, and as we're on our way to our different destinations, we all have to go back to face the situations in life that's before us. But you want us to take this message and whatever we have to face in life, God, on this journey of life, you want us to trust you. You tell us in your word in so many scriptures, God. You give so many examples in your word to trust you, to trust in you, Father, and not to lean into our own understanding not to allow our carnal thinking, God, to dictate our actions, but to allow the word of God to speak to our minds that we would trust and obey you, Father, and to put you first. So we thank you. I'm believing that each of us have heard this word, and I'm believing God we will apply it to our lives, and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Before we close, is anybody who wants prayer today? Anybody who wants specific prayer?